Hey YouTube, a few months ago I posted a much shorter version of this build. It didn't have any of the commentary, it was just really a, a 15 minute kind of fast play look at the steps that went into making this coupe. So if you think that that'd be more up your alley, you can check out that video on this channel here. And this video as promised is going to be an extended version with a lot of commentary and tips and tricks along the way for people who are looking to build this coupe or even a, a similar one. My main goal in making this coupe was to keep it as inexpensive as possible. So along the way here, I'll give a couple modifications of things you could do. Um, some additional features which would be nice to have, which I ended up cutting from, from this particular coupe. If you have any questions, post them down below and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you for watching. So obviously the first step here was finding pallets. And I managed to, I went on Marketplace, typically they were listed for about 2 or $3 each, but I managed to find some in very good shape for free, so that's what I went with. Um, and I also have another video on this, on ripping a pallet, um, on taking it apart. So you can check that out in a little more detail, but essentially I just go along the edges here and I, I take off the end boards. And then once that happens, I'm able to make a cut right down the middle. I think that's coming up here in a second. Yeah, so here I am making a cut down the middle, which ended up with, uh, I ended up having a little bit of waste, but um, a lot of these short pieces I was able to include later on in the build anyway. And really, um, it gave me very easy access to get to the back of these pallet wood boards so I could simply knock them off like this. And sometimes the nails pulled through the board, and then sometimes I actually had to back them out with the, with the hammer, just depend on how hard the pallet wood was. And then you see here, this one breaks, uh, which I was okay with that. I had enough extra wood that it, was, it wasn't worth my time to be super careful. Um, I think, you know, probably every third or fourth pallet, I ended up breaking a board. And then the next thing I do here is I think that I ripped each of these boards at three inches, maybe, total width. And I did that by taking off about a quarter inch off of both sides. And then that whole truckload of pallet wood was reduced to this, this pile here. As a general rule, you don't really want to trust that the end grain, you see where the sticker is on that 4x4? Four four? You typically don't want to trust that that's a good square cut out of the factory because it, it usually is not. So anytime you get a 2x4 or a 2x6 or something like that, you just want to take a, a little sliver piece off the end just to make sure that's a good square cut. Um, I did not mess with doing that here because this um, that sticker end on this coupe is going to end up in the ground anyway, so um, I just left it. You'll see before I make this cut here, I get the saw going full speed before I put it down into the wood. If you, um, if you have the blade touching against the wood and then start it, that's really not good for your saw. So just a general thing to keep in mind. And you see my circular saw isn't quite big enough here and it doesn't have a slide on it, so um, I wasn't able to quite get through all the way, and that's what that little splinter is there. But it's really, that's not going to have any effect on anything, and it'll all be covered up anyway in the end. What you're seeing me do here is I'm adjusting the depth of my um, circular saw cut, but there's a little lever there which allows you to move that base plate up and down, and what I'm going to do is hold up this piece of wood, which is the same thickness as a 2x4, and make my, the, the depth of my cut just barely beyond that, just a little bit deeper than a 2x4. Than a and then here, I'm making a lot of repeated cuts right next to each other. You want this, um, the 2x4 is actually 3.5 inches wide, so you want this opening, this little notch that I'm taking out, to be just barely bigger than that, maybe a 16th of an inch bigger just so that the piece of the 2x4 will fit nicely inside of that. And then you definitely want to make sure you're wearing safety goggles here because these little splinter pieces go flying up. And then here I use a hatchet to knock out these little pieces. I think a hammer would probably work just as well. Um, you just want to try to clean this up a little bit. And then, I'm going to put the, the plate of my, I'm not positive that's what it's called, but I'll just call it the metal plate. I'm going to stick my circular saw. Um, you want to make sure it doesn't slip down inside of that notch there. You want to make sure that both sides of the plate stay on the, 
on the two on the four by four. And now uh, I pulled the guide back or the guard back. You got to be really careful with this step, but you don't want your your blade guard to be banging into the into both sides here. So there's a little lever which allows you to pull the guard up. And I was able to clean up that opening pretty nicely, just uh, just using the circular saw here. And that's what it's going to look like in the end. So after all my notch cuts, this is what I was left with then. And you want to take note that two of those notches are actually three and a half inches higher on the post than the other two. And you'll see why in the next clip here. Um, and at the, at the top of the post, you see there's another notch that I cut. I believe that I did that with a combination of circular saw cuts and then also a hand saw, but I cannot remember for sure actually. The purpose of these notches is you want to make sure that the weight of the coop is not simply resting on four screws on each corner, especially if you get a lot of snow or something like that. With the notch, you have the piece of wood resting inside of the post, and so all the weight is actually sitting on the piece of wood, which is then screwed into the notch. Uh, it's a lot, a lot stronger that way. What you're going to see me do here is I'm going to secure this 2x4 piece inside of the 4x4 notches that we just cut. And I'm going to use screws here, but I really recommend that you use carriage bolts. You could probably get away with three carriage bolts in each um, on each end here. A carriage bolt is going to go all the way through this um, reddish 2x4 piece and then all the way through the 4x4 piece behind it. And on the back you're going to put a washer and then a nut. And um, you should look for galvanized carriage bolts. Those are not going to rust and they're, they're okay to be used outside and in pressure treated lumber. Which uh, The red piece that goes across here, that, that's pine. I probably should have gone with pressure treated there as well. Um, it's going to be out of the weather. It's, a, it's off the ground and it's also going to be under the nesting box. But um, if you're really looking for a coop that's going to last a long, long time, uh, like I said, that cross piece could be pressure treated wood here. And then what you'll see me do, I did it on both sides, is I'm putting my speed square, this little triangle thing in the corner here. I just want to make sure that that angle is a perfect 90 degree angle. Because if you remember, we, we cut our notch just like a hair bigger than the three by five, or than the three and a half inch two by four. And that little, that little extra wiggle room to get the two by four piece in there also, also makes it possible for it to not be a perfect 90 degree angle. So just check that before you screw everything together. In this clip you see me um, going into this piece of wood at an angle. I'm, I'm setting myself up to do something called toe nailing, or in this case toe screwing. Um, you see I, I put the drill bit in straight and then I angle it. If you try to go in at an angle right away, it ends up slipping along the piece of wood, especially if it's um, pressure treated, which tends to be pretty slippery. Any of these pieces that you can um, pre-screw, or, or pre-drill rather, before you try to get them um, all assembled, it's going to make it a lot easier on you when you're trying to hold the whole structure up, especially if you're building by yourself here. This piece of wood is really not going to carry too much weight. It's really just going to be a nailer for the, for the exterior pallet wood. Um, the, the piece of wood that's really going to carry most of the structure weight is going to only be um, a few inches away from it here. In that last step, um, you'll remember we did that angled drilling, and that was to set us up for this step. Um, if you look at the 4x4 four four post that's in my left hand, um, right above the notch I drew a, a perpendicular line across the post, and that is exactly even with the top of the 2x4 sitting inside of the notch there. So now I'm going to, like I said, I've already pre-drilled this, so I'm going to go ahead and screw these together. Just keep an eye on um, making sure that this is exactly even with the line here. This is, this would be much easier with two people than it was with one. So if you look at the top of the coop here, you'll see that the, the two by four that comes across, kind of perpendicular to the shed there, that overhangs the end of the, the post. Um, that should not be, I actually went back and modified that, so that should just end with the, end with the post. So the piece of wood that I'm adding now, this is going to 
extend past the coop and it's going to end up being the floor of the nesting box kind of this the, the part that juts out there um, closest to the camera and that way you won't have to try to frame up the nesting box separately I've seen nesting boxes that are part of the chicken coop but I always like to have mine out of it, uh, it then you don't have to walk inside of the run to get the eggs you don't have to walk inside your coop you can just um, yeah you can just get them from outside the coop You see here, I'm not pre-drilling. Once you're in the kind of the inside of the board, further from the end, you don't have to pre-drill. You're not going to have an issue with cracking that far in. But here again, I am I am pre-drilling because it's very close to the end. All right, so here you see closest to the camera, there's a little box. Um, I framed that in because it's going to end up being my clean out. I'll, there's a little piece of wood inside of the coop that I'll be able to remove and pull all the bedding through that. I'll be able to put a garbage can right below the nesting box there and that'll make it for a real easy clean out. So that's what that framing is about there. All right, in this shot, just by where I was just working, um, you see I framed up another clean out. Um, it's about a foot by foot box. You're, you're actually only going to need one of those. I just ended up in the end going with the one that's closest to the camera here. Um, and the second one, I'll just pull all the bedding through the one. And then on the far right, there's yet another clean out in that one corner there. Um, I actually ended up getting rid of that one as well. So I just went with the one clean out in the nesting box and I'll be able to pull all the bedding right through that then into a garbage can. Yeah, so this is a look at the measurements that I took before I started making these cuts. I actually do have a, a set of sawhorses, but they're made of metal. And you don't want to hit a metal sawhorse with a circular saw. So I ended up just, um, I have little blocks of wood on the grass here below, the, below this piece of plywood. And I just set the depth of my circular saw very shallow. So it was just enough to go through that. And yeah, that's me setting the depth there. Now as you're making this cut, you want to be on, um, here I'm, I'm making the cut on my side of the line because you want to make sure that you're not, um, the, the, the saw cut itself is called a kerf and you want to make sure that the, the saw kerf is not making the board too, too narrow here. So yeah, you want to cut on your side of the line in that case so you're not, not um, making the board more narrow. And then here... As we said, um, a 4x4 or a 2x4 is not actually 2x4, and a 4x4 post is not 4x4. It's 3.5x3.5. So I'm taking out the little notches for the corner posts at 3.5x3.5, and, and I probably maybe gave an extra tenth of an inch or so here just to make sure that it cleared fine. You could do this with a jigsaw here. Um, you almost have to overcut it a little bit with the circular saw blade because it's round. Um, you'll see here it doesn't quite finish that corner, but I was kind of able to pick it out, pick it out of there then. All this stuff with the circular saw, you you see I have my ear protection on now. You should have that on all the time, and also I should be having glasses on. I just tried to squint my eyes really hard to not leave much of an opening, but that's not a good. That's not a good game plan, honestly. This next set of notches is going to be a little bit bigger. Um, because if you remember how the nesting box was set up, I'm essentially in that, um, I'm going in three and a half inches there. And then the notch is essentially going to be um, as long as the nesting box comes out. Sorry, this is really difficult to, to uh, try to explain some of this stuff. I'm doing my best here though. So again, that's three and a half inches in, or maybe just a hair more. And then the notch is going to be as big as the nesting box, as long as the nesting box is pa past the end of the coop here.
and then just make sure you reposition your pieces of wood under there. You really don't want to hit the, the grass or the dirt with your saw either. That really dulls a blade very quickly. So same as before, you don't want to, you want to make sure that you're not um, taking too much of the wood by sawing on the wrong side of the line. You can always go back and take more wood off, but you cannot um, add any more, obviously. There's an old saying that says, uh, measure twice, cut once. Well, sometimes it's better to measure three times or four times because if you start making bad cuts, you end up having to drive all the way out to the hardware store or the box store to get more, get more wood, and that is a pain. All right, so I decided in my previous coops, I've actually used linoleum for the floor. Um, you see this particular spray paint, I, every bottle that I've ever used of it, it ends up busting on my hand and making a mess of me. So I was just showing that to the camera. Rust-oleum, I believe it is. Uh, but as I was saying, in my other coops, I've used linoleum over the top. And if you, if you watch, I think it's about 38 minutes. I have another coop build video. I go into good detail about how I put the linoleum over that. And I, I would not cut that corner again, honestly. Like I said, I was trying to keep this coop very cheap. But um, the linoleum, the linoleum, the linoleum is a very nice feature to have. So here, what I should have done is only cut out that one clean out, the one that I, like I said, I, I thought I was going to have two and I ended up just using one. So that, that cut should have not gone all the way across. It should have gone halfway, just enough to, for that one clean out. And now I actually had to back these screws out again. I was hoping I could maybe squeeze this piece of plywood in here on an angle and then get it into place, but I couldn't quite do it. So I had to take these screws off. Just put that board down, oriented the same way that it is up there so you don't if you don't want to flip it and then have the screw holes not quite match up with the with the post. You really want to put those screws back in the same exact hole that they were in before. Alright, so in this shot you can see the general framing of my roof. Um, this turned out to be one of the more difficult parts of the build. I feel pretty good about the stability of what I have here, but I don't feel like it, I feel like it might be a little bit of a pain for someone to, to try to duplicate. So in my next shot here, I'm going to show you a picture of the inside of my coop up at the roof and um, give you a modification that I think will make this a little bit easier and also probably a little bit stronger too, which is important, especially if you're hoping to make a similar design, but a little bit bigger. So, if you have any questions, as I said, you can post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And the other thing you could do, I keep referencing this other video that I made. Um, in that other video, I have a flat roof, which is a lot easier to, to make. And there's plans that go with that coop and everything. So, um, you might have to adjust the sizes, but the general layout will be the same uh, if you use the, the roof plans from the other, from the other coop. If you take a look at this picture here, you'll see this is how the carpenters finished the top of my shed roof. Um, they probably just used extra plywood scraps they had laying around. Uh, you could probably use the pallet wood for this also. And if you do, I would, I would say use one of the, the harder pieces like an oak. Uh, if you can tell if, if some of them are, are a little bit harder. Or especially those wide pieces that you maybe had from, from some of your pallets. Those would be even better than the narrow ones. All right, so this is how I finished the inside of my coop. Um, you see in the middle there, there's a vertical um, two by four coming down. That's one that you're gonna get rid of and replace it instead with what you saw in the last picture. Um, I, I had my vertical two by four there tied into my, um, into that horizontal two by four that comes across right above the roost. Like I said, I feel pretty good about it being stable enough, but I think what, what's in my shed is a little bit stronger and it's also probably a little bit easier to build. And then one other thing, um, do an internet search for something called collar ties. 
Um, it's essentially a horizontal piece of wood that keeps the keeps the roof from sagging, keeps the keeps the rafters there um, at the same angle you built them at, so that with snow or whatever they don't they don't start to sag. So I don't think you need a collar tie in the middle uh, because that's where the chickens are going to be sitting, especially on a coop this small. Uh, but you'll definitely want to put collar ties on each end to make sure that this is rigid enough. In this clip I'm attaching four and a half inch uh, two by four pieces that the roost bars are going to end up getting attached to. So rather than, again, I've, I've talked about the little amount that I've used to tape measure here. To make sure they're spaced in three and a half inches I simply put a little block of wood there and then I went with that. As you may have noticed from the other clip, on this side of the roof I used a piece of plywood that I have had left over from the other part of the coop. And then on the other side of the roof I ended up using pallet wood to finish it just because I was all out of plywood and I didn't want to have to buy anything else. So I think in this section I must have done a little bit of math. You really want to avoid having like a one quarter inch sliver piece of pallet wood. So you just want to space them out and plan accordingly so that does not happen. And if you look at the top of that um, 4x4 post here, you'll see that I made a, a bad notch cut. I took, I took the wrong part of the wood there, so that's not something you want to duplicate, and it was not done on purpose. So you see for this section here, I'm, I don't get my tape measure out at all, I don't believe. I just keep holding up the wood. I find you, um, once you get a good structure built, um, you can rely just on marking pieces of wood instead of really relying on your tape measure that much. Of course, now that I said that, I'll probably pull my tape measure out in two seconds here. So the piece of wood that I just added there, that's going to give the little roof something to land on. Um, not the roof, the little door, the little sliding door. So I held that piece of, of wood up and I just put a pencil mark on it and now I'm going to uh, mark in this one and I'm going to go do both cuts at the same time here alright if you if you cut your piece of wood just slightly long that's actually good you can kind of slam it up in there and then I probably honestly wouldn't even have needed a screw here because I'm going to end up putting two um, vertical pieces in there that will hold it hold it nice and snug which will be screwed in. But, um, yeah I tried forcing this one in here like I said it's better to cut it a little bit long but this one was just a little bit too long I couldn't even I couldn't even get it to go in there. I believe I put this this wood right on the inside here because um, pressure treater treated wood is a lot safer than it used to be but I know that when I've gotten a splinter from pressure treated wood it hurts like heck so I'd rather have the chickens because they're gonna be rubbing up and against this all the time um, I'd rather have them brushing up against this pallet wood which is a little bit better than the pressure treated wood all right in this section I'm gonna direct you to another video um, I put together a 38 minute um, coop, coop build video and I really like the way I did the nesting box on the other one um, like I said I was trying to cut crazy corners here with trying to keep this coop very inexpensive I, my, my initial goal with this coop was actually to keep it to a hundred bucks or below and I think it ended up being like 175 even still so um, I'll post a, a link to the other video in the description of this and hopefully also um, I'll remember to to give you an exact time of, of the uh, nesting box section of that so you can go back and watch it. Alright, in this clip I'm going to start by um, toenailing these vertical 2x4s into place and you see they're not quite at the edge. I, I space them in the width of a piece of pallet wood because I'm actually going to attach the pallet wood 
to the four by four post. And that's gonna give the whole nesting box a little bit of um, rigidity. And then in the center, you see that I'm staggering my joints here. I like the way it looks a little bit more and also I think it's a little bit more stable. I probably could have gone with more screws here. Here again, if I'd have, um, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this, but if I had a nail gun, this part would be a breeze. All this exterior pallet would work would be a breeze. You also, unfortunately, don't have the benefit of being able to do a, a redo very easily. So um, screws in that sense are a little bit more user friendly, I would say, although they do take some more time. If you take a look at this shot here, you'll see at the very bottom, the, the bottom of the nesting box was a, a regular two by four. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put one more layer of the pallet wood on here. Now that it's given me the structure that I was looking for, I'm gonna put one more layer on uh, just for aesthetics at this point. This last piece I'm gonna to have to cut and put into place. That's the kind of piece you really wanna to try to avoid. If I'd have done a little bit better math on this, I probably could have um, avoided that and made it a little bit bigger piece, but uh, it fits into place fortunately and it didn't crack when I screwed it in. And I don't really know what's going on with my video here. It's not your computer. For some reason it's glitching right now. Uh, what I should have said before, when, when I was working on the nesting box, um, a lot of those smaller pieces that I had, I should have used those whenever I had the chance, but instead I, I ended up using the long pieces and just cut them off. Uh, I, I wish at the end of this coop build that I had some of those long pieces because I ended up running out and it was a major fiasco. All right, and this, um, to make sure that the boards all end at the exact same place. I put that horizontal piece, um, it's like kind of like a, a two by two piece in there that my, that my left hand is on right now. Um, and then I was able to just jam the, jam the pallet wood slats up against that. And then when I take that off, they're all gonna be in a perfect line here. So I went ahead and just did this whole exterior face here. And then I'm gonna go back and add an event, but I just wanted to see how all this would play out before I, before I made my cut. So you'll see I do have to back out some screws then. Um, I'm actually going over it, looking inside the coop right now to see, to see the uh, what kind of framing I'll need here. I'll put up a picture here of how I ended up doing the framing, but I just marked. I think I, did, I didn't even have a pencil. I think I just marked that with a screw there, and then I'm going to take this top board off, this two by two piece or whatever, whatever it was. Oh, that right there, that's how I ended up doing the framing. I just ended up adding, I think, toenailing an additional um, cross piece at the bottom, and that's why I ended up screwing my vent to on the outside. So if you look across the top now, those without really much effort are very even.
I was going without a plan and my brain was cooked by this point of the coop build. So that's what it looked like before I put the vent on there. Oh, I ended up having to go and just add a little sliver piece at the top just so that the vent would be resting on something there. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing here. There was like a weird ridge on there, that's why I kept flipping that over. I really probably should have pre-drilled this stuff that I'm working on now. I think I got sick of doing that. You might remember a little bit ago I talked about toe nailing uh, or toe screwing the that horizontal 2x4 to the bottom of the roost bar things. Well, as I put in these bottom screws on the vent here, I'm also securing that board a little bit better too, because each of these screws is going through the pallet wood and into that 2x4. Um, toe nailing's good, but it's not nearly as strong as you know screwing something in regular. All right, this is the little door I put together for the chickens to go in and out of. And then I did glue it, but I also put a ton of staples on there. And then... I went back and added another layer on the back that kind of gives me like a little a little lip. And the little lip is going to fit inside of this track that I made on the on the table saw. That just kind of slides up and down like that. I'll put a hook at the top and then I'll I'll be able to raise and lower that door from the outside of the coop then. All right, so here I just put a little 2 by 4 piece in between these rails. And that's going to make sure that as I go up here, um, it's going to keep these the two main support pieces here um, parallel the whole way up, exactly three and a half inches apart. And I would say the the main support, the two by twos there, the real white pieces of wood, those should also be pressure treated because the end is going to be sitting in um, in the dirt. But um, I I didn't have any more pressure treated and if I have to redo the ramp at some point I'll just have to do that. It didn't take too long to make it. The pressure treated wood by the way is the stuff at Home Depot that's kind of a greenish color. It's a heck of a lot heavier and it's also um, quite a bit more expensive than the regular pine. Alright so one thing you don't see me doing here is measuring each of these individual pieces um, to width or to length I should say. Because um, if you have a nice long level like this, you can kind of clamp it down. Probably a better kind of clamp would work better than what I used there. But um, yeah, then I just ended up running the circular saw along here. And again, it makes for a really nice straight cut then. Always be watching what you're doing with that cord. You want to make sure it doesn't get stuck under there. Uh, it would be a very bad day if you'd cut through your cord. All right, so that's the ramp then. I just go back now and I add a little bit of grip pieces for the chickens here. And again, I don't measure it all. I simply go up and put them on every other, um, every other gap. Now, I'm gonna set the depth of my circular saw so it's just the, just the width of one of these pieces of wood so that even if I overcut, it's not going to majorly screw up the ramp that I've made already. Keep an eye on that cord. You always want to know where it is. I know I keep saying that, but that's really important. If you look right here on the coop, you'll see um, this piece of wood right here is a little bit narrower than it initially was when I held up this crossboard. Um, with the way that I framed the nesting box, which in hindsight I really hate, um, I was trying to avoid um, an additional cross piece right here. 
So I ended up tying the, the hinges in with the main, um, with this piece here. And the result was that I really couldn't open the coop, the, the nesting box door very much. So I ended up having to hack off um, a part of this um, to make sure I could open the nesting box door enough. Really the nesting box should not be quite as high as it is. And if it were lower, then I would be able to open the nesting box door just fine. But um, again, that would be a change. You, you definitely want to watch my other video on how I framed up the other one, because that's a lot better than how I did this one in the end. Here I am again, working at all hours of the night. The crickets kept me good company, company though. This is just plastic corrugated roofing, which is real nice because it cuts easy. You don't have to worry about cutting your hands up or anything like that. The, uh, the steel stuff will last a little bit longer. Well, not a little bit, it will probably last a lot longer. It's not gonna get dry rotted, but um, it's quite a bit pricier too. All right, and then I ended up using little um, screws with rubber washers on them to secure this. The rubber washer on the, it's kind of like right below the screw head here, there's a little rubber washer that when you put it down through the plastic roofing, it seals any hole up there so that you're not going to have an issue with water getting down around your screw. I mentioned this in my other video also, but the stuff that's on top of the nesting box, that's, um, I believe it's called, uh, shoot, what's it called? Water and ice barrier. I think that's what it's called. I'll, I'll put a link in the description to what I'm talking about here. But um, it's about 25 bucks a roll maybe uh, for probably 50 feet of it. It's really intended for using um, to put over, like if you're building a deck, you would put it over um, the ledger board which um, is the piece that you connect to the house. But anyway, it, it prevents water from getting down in between the ledger and the house. So it's, the back is adhesive, and so it kind of it lays down like a shingle, but then um, it's flexible too. So I used that over five years of having my old coop. We, we ended up moving, which is why I'm, I'm building this one now. But um, yeah, in the five years that I had the other coop, that, that water and ice barrier, the black, um, shingle looking stuff that that never failed it never it never ripped or cracked or anything so I feel real good about that and I'm sure they do sell ridge pieces for the for the corrugated roofing but um, I ended up just cutting off a little piece and I put it right over the top here the, the coop has made it through quite a few storms and I keep going out to look to see if any water's getting in there and it has not so um, yeah I feel good about how the top ended up coming out then this section is the second big modification I'm going to do for you guys who are trying to build this coop. Uh, as I said, I was really trying to stick to a pretty tight budget. My goal, as I said, was trying to keep this coop to under a hundred bucks as kind of a, a selling point for a YouTube video, but um, it ended up being quite a bit more expensive and I didn't, I didn't want to run out and get more wood. So I ended up making this door frame out of pallet wood and just a couple scraps of two by six and that was a major pain in the butt. So uh, I'm gonna put up a picture here in just a second. I have a different way I would recommend framing this. It's gonna be a heck of a lot easier and a lot faster too. So, but you can see kind of, this is what I did here. Uh, it was a nightmare. It seemed like the, 
the biggest part of this coupe build went very quickly and then the details at the end dragged on and on and on. So instead of trying to frame around the roost bars, what I would recommend is you just put a two by four piece across. Um, you can toenail to the side. You might be able to get one screw in on the, like kind of screwing up from underneath between those two screws on the roost uh, bar, those little four and a half inch piece scraps. Um, and then you'll be able to frame a rectangle door. You're not gonna have to try to, you know, like I said, you're not gonna have to frame around the, the roost bar. And you want your seam of the door to be right on that horizontal two by four so that there's no draft coming in. And I would say it'll probably be easiest then if you just bring those, the roof, um, I'm sorry, the, the pallet wood pieces that are above the opening there, if you just bring those all the way down and just screw them right um, to that horizontal two by four piece below the roost bars, that's probably the easiest way to do that. All right, for what it's worth, I'm gonna show you the process that I went through to build my crazy door around the roost bars, and hopefully you'll be able to get a little bit out of this in terms of steps and process, but uh, I wouldn't recommend you follow what I did. I think I had a couple of these screws break as I was going into the pallet wood. So as I said, it's so hard. And again, I'm not measuring any of this stuff as I go here. Um, it ends up just being an easier in the end to put the, the level across and just rip a cut across everything at one time then. That was the screw there that busted off while I was doing it. So I ended up just hitting it back and forth till it broke then. I think if I hadn't run the the pallet wood slats through the through the table saw they wouldn't fit together it's not quite jointed as much as let's say like a cutting board would be but it was it gave it um it made the, the pieces fit together a lot nicer than they would have all right so now i think this last piece there I don't think I planned for that. I think it ended up just fitting perfectly in there. Oh, almost. Off by about a quarter inch there. Okay, so once I had it up, then I believe I just marked it. This level doesn't work anymore as a level, but it does make a real good long straight edge. And I think there I'm marking where the, let's see, what was I marking there? I think I'm marking the top of the platform maybe. Or maybe I was marking the top of the little slat pieces that I, that I put in there. I can't remember honestly. And here I am using a pen instead of a pencil. You really want to have a, a stack of decent pencils when you start building. Because you'll break the tips and they go dull and pens are terrible to use. So as I was saying before, I was wishing that I had more of the long pieces of the pallet wood. Um, 
here at the bottom right where the hinges are I ended up having to use three small pieces there um, I really wish for the look of it too I would have just had um, two pieces there so I'm just trying to um, just get an idea how this opens and closes now you could probably also have the door hinges at the top um, I ended up not doing that because the roof overhangs just slightly and I wanted to um, well you'll I'm hoping to add another video um, I'm gonna have a pretty cool clean out system for this coupe in the end um, but you'll have to stay tuned for that but there is a reason why I had the hinges on the bottom here you could also have the hinges on the side like I do in one of my other coupe build videos um, but the weight of the door ends up being pretty um, it ends up being pretty heavy for um, a side for side hinges and then here if you've got predators um, I ended up just going with a nail which I bent just to hold the door but if you've got a lot of predators where you are I probably would go with I believe it's called a hasp it's kinda of like a little little lock But I was determined to not spend any more money on this coupe when I was making it. Alright, so I believe this is... Yeah, now that I got that door dry fit, I think it was just rubbing a little bit as I was closing it. So I think I just went through here and cleaned up that one edge just a little bit. Took off maybe an eighth of an inch or something like that to try to get it to close a little nicer. And then I'll probably do the same at the bottom here because it looks a little crummy down there too. All right, when I initially cut this side piece, I think that the piece that goes up and down in my left hand right now, I think that ended up being a little bit too long and it didn't allow the, the door to open properly. So I think I ended up having to go and shorten that little piece. I was just trying to, with, with both the top piece there and these side ones, I was just trying to reduce any kind of draft that would end up getting through there otherwise and it also I think maybe looks a little bit better having it like I left it here versus just having it open because otherwise you're looking through and you can kind of see the, the two by four piece in there the the main like coop structure inside of that so obviously here make sure that you're drilling into the into the door and not just putting a, a screw into the coop frame itself or else your door is not going to open anymore You see, I started this coupe build with a t-shirt on and I'm finishing with a thermal or whatever I'd call that there. This took forever. Instead of the pallet wood, you could also use the T111 siding. Um, it's that plywood with the ridges in it, but it's pretty pricey. I think it's about 38 bucks a sheet maybe. But it would be a heck of a lot faster than, than using the pallet wood. All right, now that I got everything fit and just the way I want, I'm going to put my my hinges back on here. I think I ended up using a couple more of those the screws with the rubber washers on there, not because I not because you really have to for this, but just because I had them.
All right, now I gotta put, now that I put this little, um, the little top frame here, I had to redo my nails. And I, I wish I had nails that were just a tiny bit longer because they're not quite gripping as much as I'd like them to here. But like I said, a hasp would be a better option than what I used anyway. And then I ended up using some of that corrugated roofing just to make a little bit of a drip edge above the door there. Um, just to try to direct any water from going right inside. And you see in the nesting box, why I ended up going with just one clean out is because I decided to make that center partition um, to, to be able to take it out. And then I'll just be able to pull all my bedding down through that one hole. And for the roost, I ended up using natural branches. Yeah, so that's the build. Um, if you have any questions, post them down below and I will do my best to answer them. Um, sorry, in some parts of this, it's pretty hard to describe um, exactly what's going on on the screen, but um, if you need any clarification, just ask below and I will do my best to answer any questions. Thank you for watching. We'll see you.